So uh, when I talk about early years, I don't mean that, because you know that's like hell. We wouldn't like to live there. When I mean early years, for me it's something more like this. So the surface temperature cooled down already. It's nice and comfortable up there, maybe like 30, 40 degrees. Okay, uh, can you hear me better now? Ah, uh, not really. I have to speak a little bit louder and scream a little bit. Okay, <laughs> no problem, I can do that. <laughs> so, as I said before, um, when I think about early Earth, I do not think about this hellish earliest Earth, but I rather think about the time when the surface temperature cooled down, when you had oceans at the surface and it was becoming too nice and comfortable. And then you have um, volcanism and um, first volcanic islands that uh, soak up the water, the oceanic water. And at some point, magically, you turn into continents. And this is exactly what I'm trying to investigate, how we can actually come from this point to that point where we, the humans, can actually have land to stand on. Sure, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, no, let's go to the next slide already. Uh, so, coming back to the question of habitability, what is the motivation of the study? Uh, for those who have not been there yesterday for the Astrobio Speaks competition, um, plate tectonics seems to be very important for habitability of a planet, as, or at least for Earth, it seems to be very important. So, on the one hand, plate tectonics itself leads to the regulation of the atmosphere on large global time scales, because we all know the CO2 cycle from the news from the last uh, 10 years or something like that, and um, the carbonates in the sediment basins are subducted by plate tectonics into the mantle, and um, nutrients are replenished by volcanism, and this way you can uh, regulate the atmosphere and the amount of carbon in the atmosphere on large time scales. So we speak about several millions of years, hundreds of million years. On the other hand, at the plate boundaries, so the plate boundaries like here, you have the mid-ocean ridge, for example, here is a ridge, there is a ridge. Um, there are the hydrothermal vents that we already heard about this morning. And people speculate that life may have originated at these hydrothermal vents, or at least have been further developed at these points. So um, the question is, if we wouldn't have plate tectonics, and if we wouldn't have plate boundaries, would we actually do have these hydrothermal vents or not, or would they look different? So there might be some kind of a connection. Also another thing uh, which we should be very thankful for is that plate tectonics helps to maintain a magnetic dynamo. So this dynamo, the magnetosphere, keeps the um, atmosphere from erosion by solar wind, and therefore um, makes Earth even more comfortable for us. So, but this is just about plate tectonics. What's now about continents? Well, on the one hand, continents helped on Earth to have an um, enhanced land-based evolution, so us, and uh, to have a larger biodiversity than if you wouldn't have had continents. And on the other hand, there could be some kind of a relation between continents and plate tectonics, and therefore an indirect factor for the habitability. So when did continents form on Earth, or some kind of pre-continents and plate tectonics? What do we actually know? Well, we did learn this morning already that we don't know that much, actually. But we already heard about the zircons, which are very stable crystals. And the oldest ones that have been found so far in the Jack Hills in Western Australia are 4.4 billion years old. So this is really old. It's like 100 million years after the moon-forming impact. And the interesting thing about it is that they form together with granite. So it's a more phasic crust, almost continental crust, you could call it. And it um, forms when hydrated basaltic crust is somehow recycled, remolten, in which kinds, however. So at this time, 4.4 billion years ago, oceans and um, some kind of crust uh, recycling was present at this time. I wouldn't say that it's plate tectonics, but something was going on at that time. So here you can see the timeline of what people think, different people think, uh, when continents did form on Earth and how much continents formed when. So some people argue that the first continents formed actually really 4.4 billion years ago. Some argue that it took uh, like 600, 500, 600 uh, more million years. 
And then we have several different models and observations depending on uh, continents shoot it right up. We had already at four by four billion years ago as many continents as today, or actually took a long time and gradually increase the mass of the continents. So the data points that we do have, like right in the beginning, something has been there because we do have the circuits. And in the last 300, 400 years, 500 years, we do know roughly what uh, the amount of, of continents. But that's actually a problem if you want to simulate continents and get continents and plate tectonics in our models. Because if we run models with the heat that we did have at the beginning of um, the Earth in the, in the interior of the mantle, we should actually end up with a stagnant lit planet. So we heard yesterday again uh, already about um, stagnant lit planets versus uh, plate tectonics planets. So this would be like Mars, this would be like Earth. And um, if the mantle is very, very hot and warm, um, you will most likely not have plate tectonics. And first, the planet has to cool, going rather into this age um, to be able to have plate tectonics. So that's why we model it and try to see what happens, where we can actually form continents and how long it takes and which processes can be used to get continents. So this kind of picture you will see now in the next slides too, so I will explain it a little bit. Um, you can see several different colors here in this picture, and they are tracing the composition. So the black color, like here for example, is like mantle material, non-depleted primordial mantle silicates. The blue color is basaltic crust, this is like the primordial crust that's produced by melt. Um, green or like felsic or less mafic um, crust um, is what could have been um, at the time when we found the circuits, first circuits. <coughs> and the red color means that we really have granite continental crust like we see it today at the continents. And these white regions are always melt regions. And above melt regions, continent crust is formed. And to actually come from uh, basaltic crust to continent crust, you have to subduct the wet basaltic crust, remelt it again to come to felsic crust, uh, resubduct it again to come to real granite felsic crust. So if we now um, just try to understand how continents actually influence the simulation of plate tectonics, um, here we have, or I've done several models uh, where we start with some kind of pre-continents, so this felsic crust, this green crust, um, to see if it can help to actually get plate tectonics. And um, at this simulation, you can see that at the boundaries of these pre-continents and the normal crust, due to larger stresses, plate tectonics initiates at this point and plates start to subduct at these points. So if you investigate it over time, you have more and more subduction, new continent, a uh, new phasic crust is forming. At some point, this phasic crust is also subducted, and then you can end up with the first continents, which are very, very small, but um, grow this time. But the problem is that on Earth, we wouldn't start with these pre-continents. We would start with the standard basaltic crust that we also have at all other planets that we can investigate so far or terrestrial planets, I should say. So then I started um, like an early Earth scenario. So these deep data are actually only for people that are in mental convection simulations, that they believe me, that I try to be as Earth-like or early Earth-like as possible. Um, using also present day or actually realistic yield stresses that you have to overcome to actually be able to, to break material to actually get weak zones to, to initiate plate tectonics and um, using peritotite melt curves. And there already after a very, very short time, so this is like 230 million years after the moon forming impact, so this starts at zero is the moon forming impact, um, we can see that we have a lot of convection going on in the mantle. So the core is always ignored, I only simulate the mantle. And um, since we have so much heat in the mantle, because planets start very hot, we have very, very, a very thin lithosphere um, 
And here you can see the different convection zones. So white means that we have strong convection, red means that we have weak convection, and black means that we have no convection at all. So if this would be a mass picture, everything up here would be black. On Earth, however, um, since we have so much heat in the beginning, everything is like moving around a little bit. Even the surface is locally mobilized as a surface. But the problem is that the mantle is really hot, so the surface material cannot go down. It's less dense than the material beneath and the mantle material, so the basaltic crust always wants to somehow flow on top. And um, only when um, the mantle is not that hot anymore, um, plates can actually subduct into the mantle. However, after some time, since this surface crust gets mobilized and pushed against each other, uh, surface crust this way can somehow recycle into the mantle because it's pushed together. And this way you can have like melting right beneath the crust. So this crust then is remolten, which is not plate tectonics. It's something different still have to find a name for that. And um, this way you can actually form first, first um, phasic crust and first continental crust. And after 300 million years, um, already have some larger continents um, uh, that have been produced at that time without plate tectonics. So here you can see that the, uh, the crustal volume um, over time. Again, here is the moon forming impact. And you can see that after some time, crust, actually, phasic crust and continental crust form at the same time because just everything that's the surface is somehow pushed down at the same time. Very interestingly, if you look at the um, stress field or the strain rate field, we can see that again locally at these points where the first continents have formed we actually have rather large stresses. So these are the points where later on, during the evolution <coughs> of the mantle cooled down, plate tectonics can initiate again, or actually can finally initiate. And um, this now brings up a new idea of how actually continents and plate tectonics formed on Earth. So the possible continent formation would be that in the beginning, right here, you would have some kind of surface mobilization no subduction of the mantle material, but rather pushing together of the basaltic crust. This way, uh, precontinents can be formed uh, very early in time, but it takes a long time until the mantle actually cools down that we have um, the initiation of plate tectonics at, that at this point. So if you look again at the volume of the continental crust, what my models would predict is that we have some crust formation, continental crust formation right in the beginning, then more or less nothing is happening for a large time, and then um, the formation of the present day continents shoots and starts to begin due to the initiation of plate tectonics. So thank you very much. So in this model, it's about the volume of the continents. So um, I don't have different heights of continents yet. So they all have the same height of 20 kilometers. Yeah, so the area forms automatically with time when you, when you build up new continents. Um, and also continents can, can merge together. And this way, you get the larger continents. But the volume is restricted in um, such a way that I cannot have mountains yet. Did we have another question? So how long after Earth's formation would you put the start of plate tectonics? That really depends on the, on the parameters. So that's also why I didn't give a real number. So here you can see that at some point suddenly plate tectonics sets in. But this depends on, on really, it, it can be anywhere in this region, depending on how fast the mantle really cooled um, how strong convection was on the exact initial parameters. 
but your so your diagram essentially shows it about a billion years after life after we have fossils after life began on this earth is that true or am I missing that or I can't see that um, yeah. You mean this point here or right there? So this, that, is, that this is more just an indication of that it takes a long time or can take a long time act, um, until actual plate tectonic starts. But we can have some kind of continuous continent formation, even though it's only weak formation before real plate tectonics or present day like plate tectonics initiates. So it's not a problem with the fossils um, because. Um, you would have some kind of continental uh, preserved material right in the beginning already. I'm sorry, we don't have any more questions. Time for any more questions right now. If you could um, address those to Lena after, afterwards. Thank you, Lena.